One of the biggest challenges in creating a composite image is producing a realistic and smooth transition between the two images that you're blending together. For example, this image on the top has a rather bland sky, and I want to replace it with the sky in the image below. I'll use the Move tool to drag my more interesting sky into the image where I want to replace the sky. I can then close my original image. Now in this case, I've already created a selection for the sky I want to replace, as you can see here. So if I add a layer mask to the image that contains the sky that I want to use instead, you can see that that image will only be visible within the sky area. Now in this case, I need to reposition the sky, but I don't want the layer mask to be moved because it already identifies the area where I want this new sky to be visible. So I'm going to unlink the layer that contains my new sky and the layer mask that defines where that new sky should be visible. By doing so, I can now choose my sky layer and drag it with the Move tool so that it's essentially moving within the confines of the layer mask that I've already created. Now at first glance, this seems to be a relatively realistic and believable composite image. But if we zoom in close to the horizon, you'll see that the transition between the existing image and the new sky that we've used to replace the existing sky is rather abrupt. If I turn off the new sky, you can see that previously there was a nice gradual transition between the horizon and the sky above. Now we have a very obvious indication that we've created a composite image. In Photoshop CS4, we can select the mask on the Layers panel, and then on the Masks panel, simply increase the Feather setting so that we get a smoother transition between the two images. In versions of Photoshop prior to CS4, you can accomplish the exact same thing by applying a Gaussian blur to the layer mask. What we're trying to accomplish here is a nice smooth transition between those two areas. Now increasing the feather too much will cause such a transition that we get a weird halo effect between the two images. The transition is occurring across too large a distance. And sometimes, even when using a small setting for feather, we'll find that the transition isn't positioned in an optimal position, and therefore we need to shift it around a little bit. Essentially this means our selection was less than perfect. I'll click the Mask Edge button on the Masks panel to bring up the Refine Mask dialog box. I'm using the Quick Mask Preview here so that I can see a color overlay indicating which areas of the image are masked out and which areas will be visible for the current layer mask associated with the layer that we're working on. If I adjust the Contract Expand slider, you can see I'm able to contract or expand the area where the masked image is visible. I can use this control to fine-tune the position of that transition between the masked areas and the visible areas so that it aligns with the object I need it to, in this case, the horizon. Once I have an appropriate setting there, I can click OK and my mask will have been refined. As you can see, I now have a much smoother transition that is positioned properly to create a believable composite image. Of course, in some cases, you may have a problem with your layer mask that you can't solve using the tools available on the Masks panel. For example, if you look to the right of these hay bales, you'll see that my original selection was obviously a little bit flawed. In this type of situation, you're really going to need to work manually to clean up your mask. In this case, I would use the Brush tool with a very small brush with a hardness value set to 0%. I can then zoom in really close on the edge that needs to be cleaned up, and I can paint with black or white as needed directly on the mask. So clicking on the thumbnail for the layer mask I'm working on, just to make sure it's active on the layers panel, I can then move out into the image. In this case, I need to reveal the sky in this area where I can see a halo around the bales of hay. So I'll paint with white on this layer mask to reveal the new sky covering up the halo effect I'm seeing along the edges of the bales of hay here. In many cases you'll find that there's simply no replacement for manually cleaning up the edge of your mask to produce the very best results.